Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to read you another special book for you. And it is called The Sweet Touch by Lorna and Lisa Ballion. So this author name by Lorna and Lisa Ballion, it might be familiar. Can you guess what other book it is? Like last time I read that book. Pause the video and think. It's Leprechauns Never Lie by Lorna and Alicia Ballion. That's about a leprechaun that has gold coins. So this book it has the same author in it. So I hope you like this book. So let's get started. The Sweet Touch by Lorna and Licia Ballion For Peggy and Penny Peggy found a penny. She put the penny into a nearby gumball machine. But instead of a gumball, a shiny, genuine plastic gold ring rolled into her hand. Peggy liked the ring well enough but she was very fond of sweets and would have preferred a cherry gumball. She put the ring on her finger and wandered off, hoping to find another penny. When Peggy was tucked into bed for the night, she remembered the shiny, genuine plastic gold ring. She turned it around on her finger and rubbed it to see if the shiny would come off. The bed trembled, and out of a puff of smelly dust, a strange, tiny creature appeared. Peggy yanked the quilt over her head and huddled with her eyes scrunched shut and her heart pounding. Silly girl, a wee voice whispered in her ear. I won't hurt you. Peggy peeked at him. Who are you? She asked timidly. I am Oliver, the magnificent magic genie. He looked so funny and sounded so funny that Peggy started to giggle. Oliver was indignant. He said he had come to grant her one magic wish and he certainly wasn't going to do it if she was going to laugh at him. Peggy stopped giggling and looked at Oliver doubtfully. If you are a really truly magic genie, why can't I have three magic wishes like everybody else? Oliver said, I am only a tiny genie and rather new at the magic business. I can only manage one wish. Well, one wish is better than none, but it's a difficult thing to decide. So they sat down to think it over. Peggy thought it would be lovely if she could have a big chunk of creamy chocolate fudge. Oliver said, Peppermint sticks might be better. Red spots pop out all over me whenever I eat chocolate. Peggy thought a barrel of gumdrops would be nice. A truckload of candy cherries would be even better. A lollipop tree, gallons and gallons of root beer, 500 ice cream cones, all flavors, a million jelly beans. Wait, said Oliver, I know just what to do. I'll give you the magic touch. He explained to Peggy that it was not easy to do, but if he couldn't manage it, everything she touched would turn into something sweet. Peggy agreed that it would be the best way to get everything they wanted with just one wish. So she said, I wish everything I touch would turn into something sweet. 
Oliver stood on his head and rubbed his wings together. He wiggled his toes, licked his fingers, and jumped up and down six times. He whispered some magic words into his pocket, flew around Peggy's head seventy-three times, and sat down to say the alphabet backwards. Suddenly, they were surrounded by the sweet smell of chocolate. I've done it! I've done it! Whooped Oliver. Your feet! Look at your feet! The rug under Peggy's feet had turned into soft, gooey chocolate, and it was squishing up between her toes. Peggy happily licked her toes. Touch something else! Oliver begged. You know I can't eat chocolate. Peggy plopped around her room, leaving a gooey chocolate trail, and touching everything in sight. Her jump rope became a licorice whip. The bedposts turned to gingerbread. Her new crayons became candy sticks. Marbles turned into jawbreakers and bubblegum balls, and her very best beads became a necklace of jelly beans. They nibbled and giggled and ate and ate. Peggy jumped on the bed and sank into a very soft marshmallow mattress. Her pillowcase changed to fine spun sugar. Which quickly tore, and feathers billowed out as cotton candy. My quilt has turned to taffy, Oliver! Shrieked Peggy. Help me pull it! Peggy took one corner of the quilt. Oliver took another, and they pulled and tugged and twisted the tacky stuff until they were so tangled up they could barely move. Oliver, I have a tummy ache," said Peggy. "I think you'd better turn the wish off now. I haven't learned how to do that yet. I only know how to turn a wish on," said Oliver sadly. "I'm tired and thirsty," wailed Peggy, syrupy tears rolling down her face. Me too," said Oliver, "and I want to go home, but I can't fly with all this taffy on my wings." What are we gonna do?" Peggy asked him. "Well, let me think about it," said Oliver. And he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought. They were both sound asleep when Oliver's mother flitted into the room. She had been looking for Oliver all night. My, my, what a mess! She muttered softly. What am I going to do with that boy? She pried him loose from the tangle of taffy and scraped the marshmallow from his bottom. She propped him up and wiggled him until he sleepily muttered the alphabet frontwards. She dangled him by the gummy seat of his pants and whirled him around Peggy's head thirty-seven times. She emptied the magic words out of his pocket. She jumped down and up with him six times. She cleaned off his fingers with the hem of her petticoat and untangled his sticky wings. She turned him over her knees, gave him a love pat on the fanny, a kiss on the nose, and carried him off into the sunrise. Peggy woke up with her quilt all twisted and tangled around her, and feathers stuck in her hair. She looked at the shiny, genuine.
plastic gold ring on her finger and wondered if the shiny would come off if she rubbed on it. The end. So I hope you like this book. So in this book, there's a teensy thing you need to know about. So this girl named Peggy, she found a magic genie that is a small genie that is new to the magic business. And the genie said to Peggy that, do you want the magic touch? And then Peggy had the magic touch and then she made everything. The bed became gingerbread. Um, her beautiful necklace of beads made, made into a jelly bean necklaces. So that's how well, everything she touched, she, it turned into candy. So then in the end, like somewhere in the middle, her tummy ached. So you know how that happened? Because she ate too much candy. You should never eat too much candy. It will spoil your body. And also it can spoil your teeth. And cavities will come. So I hope you really understand this. So if you like this book, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye bye everyone, see you in the next video.